In today's video I'm reacting to your plant collections inspired by my tutorials. Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. A couple of weeks ago I asked you to submit your plant collections to me so I can react to them. You guys really enjoyed part one. I hope you enjoyed this video as well. So I think we're gonna turn this into a more ongoing series. I definitely wanna keep this more interactive content running and I'll always ask you on my community tab uh, for submissions when I'm ready. So make sure to subscribe and check that out. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to your submissions in the future. But we have plenty to go through today, so let's just get started straight away. Alrighty, we're starting off with Virginia from the US. Hello, Jan and Brad. There's a picture and a video of my Apple Premium Panatum. That is placed on a D-shaped moss pole and it has attached to it and grown exponentially. I absolutely love this plant and it's a statement piece in my home. Thanks for inspiring me to give moss poles a try and explaining your process. It truly was helpful. It, tr it truly has helped my plants mature so much. Hope to send you my Monstera Dubia as well. Take care and give Brett our regards too. Brettles, he's right under the table on his favorite chair uh, down here. That was Sharon. Oh, no, it's not. Your name is Sharon. You're from Virginia in the US. Okay, thank you, Sharon. <clears throat> Virginia in the US. Last time when I reacted to that, um, people pointed out that Mississippi is actually quite tropical. I was talking about Mississippi last time and I said it doesn't sound very tropical. Um, I was then corrected, which in hindsight I'm like, yeah, I should have known this. Virginia, up there, okay. So just south of New York and north of North Carolina. So let's have a look at your picture. So this is your Apipremnum panatum. It looks amazing. It looks really good. So it looks like you have it potted in a rice cooker, but look, if that works for you, that that's all we need, right? I love these mature leaves at the top. The fenestrations of Epipremnum panatum are just so nice. That looks amazing and you can really see a very decent continuous increase in leaf size as well as um, change in shape. So you get more and more fenestrations as the plant matures. So whatever you're doing, keep doing because you're doing amazing. Looks amazing. That newest leaf is so nice. Wow. The size really only comes through compared to your hand. Nice. Well done. Thank you so much for submitting and keep doing what you're doing. Oh, and you asked me a question. Sorry, it takes me a little while to get used to this again. Um, <laughs> besides keeping the moss pole moist, what things can we do to encourage rooting into the moss pole? Roots seek moisture, roots actually also seek darkness. Um, technically having a see-through pole, for example, isn't the best idea, um, but then obviously the inside of the moss pole would still be dark. But from my experience, a healthy plant is gonna grow more roots. So if your plant is healthy, happy, thriving because you're providing it with good conditions, then you'll see more root growth as well as more foliage growth. Right? If your plant is struggling to survive in the first place, it's not necessarily going to grow a whole lot of roots. So just in general conditions, right? if your plant is growing in the right conditions, it will grow roots, moss pole or not. Um, and then obviously if there is a moss pole, then these roots can take full advantage of the moss pole. Next one from Laura. Hi Jan, here are some videos of my plant collection. I'm in love with moss poles. I learned so much from you and I'm following you already since the beginning on Instagram. Thank you Laura. It's been I think four or five years on Instagram now. Here's my moss pole wall. I set it up in August 2023 and it grew very nicely since then. She's from Germany and her Instagram is Miss Houseplants. So let's have a look. Nice. Nice Sodi Roy. Now Majestic, I think it's a Majestic. Honestly, the Majestic is so nice when it's still more juvenile. Mine grew too large and I hated it, so I chopped it into many bits, never really recovered. Nice, I love that. 
very nice variegation on your Monstera. Looks really good. Definitely a really continuous increase in leaf size and continuous increase in fenestration. And I really love that you have all of these roots on the side as well, right? So especially with Monstera Deliciosa, the variegated or the green version, it will grow so many aerial roots. Not every single aerial root has to take full advantage of the moss pile. I often have some aerial roots going around the moss pile or away from the moss pile as well, right? Monsteras in particular can actually grow roots um, alongside the stem as well. So not just the node roots into the moss pile, the entire stem roots into the moss pile. So just because there's two or three roots that haven't rooted into the moss pile doesn't mean that there's no roots within the moss pile. I did a full video on uh, my Monstera propagation um, the other day, actually a couple of videos of my big mother plant, a smaller plant as well and so on. So that is perfectly fine and I love that. But what you might be able to do, see how there's the one aerial root that's kind of a, missing the pot? I would just pop that back into the pot because that aerial root, once it touches the aeroid mix, is gonna grow a huge root system again. So that's still perfectly fine. I do that all the time. Um, so that would just be one other thing. We always wanna improve the root system, but not that your plant needs it. It's thriving quite clearly, but I see that aerial root dangling around and I really want to poke it into the, um, into the pot. And that looks really nice. I love that light setup over there. Looks good. You're using the bottle upside down technique. On that bottle upside down technique, just another um, little comment to part one. In part one, I saw multiple people use the cups and I thought it was a really good idea, but somebody in the comments actually pointed out that using the cups makes the water release a bit quicker. Apparently, you know, the bottle being a closed environment um, offers a little bit more resi resistance or something like that. Yeah, I'm not a, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how to technically explain that, but basically at the end of the day, apparently if you use the bottle, and the water releases a little bit slower, which means that if your moss pile is really dry and hydrophobic, it needs that slow release to slowly absorb the water. If your moss pile is dry and you use the cup, it might just create a mess. At least that's the experience from the person who left a comment. I personally haven't tried the cups, but thought I might as well point this out while we're here. Nice, I can tell by the bottles that you live in Germany, actually. <laughs> Good old Apfelsoft Schorl, I hope. Maybe Mineralwasser. Looks really, really good. Maybe one thing I would encourage you to consider in the long run, you've got your light source set up coming from above, which is basically meaning that your moss poles, all the leaves are just gonna go wee. Based on the shelving that you've got set up, I assume that you want to have a nice display side, all of the leaves pointing forwards, like on this El Choco over here, which you can't really see in frame. Um, but if you want that nice display side, then have the light coming from the front so that the leaves will face the light. If the light is coming from above, the leaves will face up, which means if you're looking at the moss pile from the front, you pretty much just see petiole and the pole itself. Just something to consider, but you know, you can change it at any time. Like it's not like the plant grew that way and it will never change. If you change the position of that plant, it will change within just a week or so. Oh, no, if you change the position of the light, it will change within a week or so. All right, sorry, oh my God. <laughs> uh, did not learn from part one to be a bit quicker. I really need to hurry up. I could talk underwater, right? All right, next one, we've got Shiv. And Instagram is Shiv STG. Hi Jan, thank you for the opportunity. Attaching the link for my plant collection on moss poles. Would love to hear your feedback and comments. Originally from India, but settled in Dallas, Texas. All right, Texas, definitely warm, but I don't know about the humidity over there. But look, we've had people from Canada and all over the world submit already, so I don't think your outdoor climate is all too important. Really depends on your house and your indoors and what you do. So let's have a look at your video. Nice, love the Florida ghost. <laughs> the world famous SBG Mandela. Oh, thank you, that's very nice. 
So now I'm famous for my Mangela and being the person that has to move house with all of their plants all the time. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, that looks good and September 22, nice and small. That's how most people grow their um, Mangela, right? Kind of trailing. But yeah, yours is, I love how lush it looks at the bottom as well. You probably have had more than just one vine on here, right? So that looks really good. Yeah. I think you can give that mandula way more light. I think if you want to see a decent increase in leaf size going forward, give her light. Because she also has quite a lot of variegation, so there's not much of her that can really contribute to photosynthesis. So mine really exploded once I put her in the greenhouse where she gets quite a lot of direct sun actually, which, you know, some parts got a bit burned, but I learned my lesson. But in general, I think indoors, it would be hard to get your plant to burn indoors unless your entire house is a window. Um, but yeah, try giving her even more light. But so far it looks amazing and really nice progression of uh, leaf increase. Nice, so do I. Never heard of this one. Oh, that looks so nice. Oh, thank you. Looks really good. You've got great taste in plants. <laughs> 10 out of 10. And yeah, just keep doing what you're doing. Be patient and be consistent. Next one, my name is Didier, Didier, I think. Um, Didi Plant Dad on Instagram and TikTok. Um, I'm from Togo and I live in France. My plant journey started during the first lockdown in 2020. Since then, I've been growing a lot of plants indoors and outdoors. My favorite genus is Philodendron. Welcome to the team. So when I discovered your YouTube channel in the summer of 2022, I knew that my climbers had to go on moss poles. Now I have almost plus, uh, 20 plus moss poles. A year ago, I started posting planty videos on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you for featuring us on your channel and thank you for inspiring me. Feel free to edit the video to your liking. Mate, I already have about four hours of editing ahead of me. I'm not gonna edit your video as well, but I'll definitely look at it. Finally, I have a question. Sometimes I feel overwhelmed with all the plant care and content creation. Have you ever felt this way and how do you deal with it? Thank you again and happy growing. Alrighty, let's have a look at your video first and then I can address your questions. Hi, my name is Didier. I'm a plant enthusiast. I live in France and you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at DidiPlantDat. Here are some of my plants on most poles inspired by Sydney Plant Guy. Nice. Looks great. Good plant to start off with. If anybody wants to have a first plant to put on a moss pole, choose a pothos. Nice, nice, nice. And I think the little things that you clip on there, right? The little are those, um, I think they're beneficial bugs, right? I see a lot of Europeans do that. It's not really a thing over here in Australia, or at least not that I've really seen or heard of. Um, it would be really interesting to learn a little bit more about that. Milano, the hardest. I agree. Oh my god, it took me three and a half years to finally get some decent results on my Milano that I was happy with. And then, then I had to move. <laughs> Which I feel like it's just got to set it right back. I just, I don't know. It just doesn't really like me. It's on what if you really, really want a Milano, I would actually, it's one of the plants where I would say, maybe try and get a larger cutting in the first place. If you get one of these really small cuttings and mine was as small as yours, it can take you a very long time, which can be a little bit discouraging. So if you really want a Milano, get a larger one, in my opinion. Um, if you really want a dark velvet plant, but you don't want to spend much money on a more established plant, get either a glorious, a splendid, um, yeah, get one of those actually. 
They're hybrids of Milano and Vercosum or Milano and Gloriosum. So it has the Milano parentage in it. It grows really nice, large, dark leaves. They're both climbers as well, but because they're hybrids, they're much easier to grow, like splendid and glorious, sized up probably five times as fast as Milano did. Um, so much more rewarding to grow, much easier to grow. So especially if you're new to velvets or new to moss pulse and so on, I'd recommend going with a glorious or a splendid instead of a Milano. You get similar-ish looking plants, um, but at, at a fraction of the effort. Mm, yeah, nice one. Biggest leaf, Jose Bono. Nice! Very nice. That's a good looking one. I popped mine into, wow, that's huge. I just popped mine into, um, my greenhouse and it's finally growing some really nice leaves. There we go, this is Philodendron Glorious. It looks like a splendid to me. Based on the petiole and everything else, I do think this is a splendid, not a glorious, but they're just names. But definitely, look at that. Much larger than the Milano. There's definitely some Milano parentage in here, right? Much larger than the Milano and you're probably giving them the same treatment. Yeah, look, Rafa de Foro de Kursova, I never really had much um, success with it. Um, actually, Jake the plant guy, he has a really nice one uh, on a moss pole. I just popped mine in the garden and she just started running everywhere. So, yeah, I don't know. I do love your facial expressions. <laughs> very, nice, very entertaining to watch. And the future star, Monstera Escalado, yes! I just added that one to my collection as well, so I'm really excited to see how that goes. Well, yours has already increased in leaf size decently. Not sizing up, Epipremnum Panade? Really? Not sizing up? Well, it is at least giving you fenestrations. So you see that what, there's a word for it. Oh, I always forget about it. There's a word that basically describes how the leaf changes in appearance as it matures on autonomy or something like that. Something like that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. See, Majestics, for some reason, size up so quickly. Exactly the same happened to me. It sized up so quickly, but the le large leaves don't look that nice. I think the juvenile ones look so much better. And hang on, let's go back a bit. I love that you are like air layering the plant throughout. There's like a little air layering with a pot. Then you've got some cling wrap with moss around it over here to, oh, and there's a little like, I don't know, maybe a recycled bottle or something like that at that bottom node down there. I personally never find the need to do this on top of just growing it on a moss pole in the first place. Like I get it, you want to create a root system 360 degrees around that node, but to be honest, it does that anyway. The roots just grow from the front towards the back. Um, I never felt the need to and Obviously, it seems to be working for you, but just a word of caution. Um, and that's also something that um, people left in the comments because I've never really done it, so I don't really have any negative experience from it. But people in the comments let, uh, told me that that cling wrap with moss um, and then, you know, obviously keep that moist, that is definitely encouraging potential rot, right? Because um, there's no airflow in there. Um, you're keeping it really moist all of the time. So there are chances of the stem and the node actually rotting by putting that cling wrap around it. So I would just be conscious of airflow uh, if that's something that you do but again I personally never found the need to but quite clearly it's working for you other the otherwise the plant wouldn't continuously grow just a word of caution in case anybody else is wondering beautiful they just look like so nice when they roll out right or when they when they first unfurl 
I don't know, all the dragons in the world. I know Tim from Grow Vertical really loves all of the dragon looking philodendron and he's given me a hybrid as well, which I do like, but I would probably never buy one of them, sorry. Tastes are different. Noise Mangela, I love that. Ah, you're harsh on yourself there, I think. And that one looks nice, Colombian species. All right, I think it's a, more of a crawler, right? So I would expect very small internodal spacing. Thank you for sharing. Looks really good. I saw the, you have a lot of plants in the background as well. Looks really, really good. Just keep doing what you're doing. And you asked me a question as well. Um, if I ever get overwhelmed with plant care and content creation, I definitely have to say that these days content creation, so filming and editing, takes up much more time than my actual plant care. I'm a very operations driven person or task driven person. Basically, I love doing something and looking at a more efficient way of doing it. And I subconsciously do that all the time. I don't really consciously think about it. I just, my brain just works that way. So I managed to get really, really efficient with my plant care over the years. So the plant care in itself doesn't actually take that much time. It is more of a continuous effort, right? There's not a single day where I don't do some little bit of plant care here and there, even if it's just watering some plants, right? Um, so it's more of a continuous effort. And obviously if I would stop with that continuous effort, all of the things that I have to do would build up and then suddenly it becomes a large chunk of time that I need to spend on plant care. So I kind of just made it work that like, you know, in the morning I wake up, I have a coffee, I walk around, I just quickly see if any of my plants need a bottle upside down or if there's a plant that I should put outside. Oh, it's raining in the afternoon. Let's pop her on the balcony and so on, right? So I started just kind of doing a little bit every day, which works really well for me. But yeah, it is, it is honestly like a full-time job, creating content, editing it. And it's not just like you edit it and then that's it. Even just the posting and thumbnails and titles and responding to comments, responding to DMs, stories and so on, right? Um, it is definitely a, a, a job, a full-time job um, that I think a lot of people would really underestimate unless you've done it yourself. So. Don't worry, I feel you. Just make sure that it stays fun for you, right? If you are overdoing it and you end up not liking your plants anymore because, you know, it's just kind of too much work and so on, then that's also not good. Keep it sustainable for yourself by always questioning, like, am I actually enjoying that? All right, next one. Hi, my name is Hitomi. I'm originally from Japan, but currently reside in Seattle, Washington, USA. I've started my plant journey late in June 22. I started with moss poles in that fall, but I had to take all of them down, then restarted in April 23. They are mostly still babies, but given the conditions I have, cooler climate and no natural light in the house, no cabinet, I'm happy and most importantly, I enjoy it. I love your relaxed attitude towards growing plants and your plant decorating style. Thank you. Um, I also appreciate your sense of humor. <laughs> My boyfriend is not a plant guy, but he likes watching your videos with me. Your video has helped me better care my plants and enjoy the hobby rather than stressing about why it's not growing well. I am a perfectionist. Straight up, I love what you said over there that you do live in a cooler climate, but most importantly, you don't have let let natural light in the house. And that is more important that you live in Seattle, right? If you live in a house without windows, it doesn't matter if that house with no windows is in, in the tropics or in Antarctica or whatever, you're not getting any light. You will have to supplement, but that's perfectly fine. Sometimes it can be a blessing in disguise because you're not relying on natural light. You're putting more effort into supplementing your light conditions, which means that you have more consistent conditions than somebody who purely relies on natural light. You don't get fluctuations throughout the seasons and so on. Some plants do like, the ups and downs, right? But I'm just saying most of these plants, if they're more tropical, right? They usually have like similar-ish climates, similar-ish light exposure throughout the year and so on, right? The differences aren't as uh, harsh uh, towards the equator than they are uh, towards the poles. Anyway, Jesus, now I'm talking about geography. Let's watch your video. Nice.
I don't know. It sounds like you might have a cat um, in the background. It's some litter. No, nah, that's not a cat. Oh, hello, doggo. Looks great. Look at that Adansonia. Decent. Looks very good, honestly. And I love your attitude towards it as well. You're being more relaxed. I personally am a bit of a perfectionist as well. So I think this hobby is really teaching me a bit of patience. It's teaching me to just accept certain things as well right like you can't control everything if you try to control every single thing then plants is probably not the hobby for you and I love that you're being realistic you acknowledge the shortcoming of your house it's the light you're trying to supplement but you know you're realistic with your expectations so happy days and now all you got to do is Stay patient and consistently care for them and keep doing what you're doing. It's more about enjoying the journey than it is about getting towards a certain end result. Trust me, there is no end result. Even if you achieve your perfect end result, where do you go from there? These are living plants. That end result isn't going to stay like that. It's not like an artwork that you've painted and then once you painted it, you hang on the wall and it will never change. They're living organisms. So enjoy the journey. Make sure that you enjoy the looking after your plant part and that you enjoy every single leaf that it grows and not just oh I'm waiting for this plant to grow ginormous leaves it might never do that you might spend four years with that plant and you still didn't get that ginormous leaf that you wanted right I'm so <laughs> enjoy the journey obviously it's good to set yourself some goals and have some sort of end result in mind but by the time you get there trust me your goal post will have moved uh, anyway so good on you and thank you for submitting so I need to wear glasses, otherwise I'll get too tired watching the screen all day. Next up, we've got Andrew from Jakarta. I like to participate in the SPG Inspired. Here's a link. The plant ID is Philodendron Compass Portoanum. I used to have one of those. Uh, ba -ba -ba. And let's go. Okay. send a few videos let's look at all of them nice <laughs> sorry I think um, somebody just cleared the throat in the back of your video <laughs> thanks for including that nice looks great I do love that leaf shape that it has and you can definitely see lots of roots here so I'm wondering why you find the need to have a cable tie there because just purely based on the roots that I can see wouldn't the plant have already rooted into the pole so you don't need to secure it uh, to it anymore because I do think visually it's a little distracting but obviously that's up to you um, but it, I don't see the need for it looks really good decent increase in leaf size can we talk about your outdoor area please because yeah Made sense when you said that you're in Indonesia because that's a bloody jungle out there. Beautiful. So, you know, I think Indonesia is known for being quite humid. So that's why you probably get away with quite a skinny moss pole. But for anybody who's not lucky enough to live in a really humid environment, I would not recommend having really skinny moss poles like that. They'll just dry out too quickly because there's not enough moss to actually uh, hold the moisture in the first place. But it totally works for you. It just shows that, you know, we all live in different conditions, but if we keep the principles in mind, we can definitely make it work for us, right? So you might not need a really thick moss pole because your moss pole hardly ever dries out because it might be in like 80 to 90% humidity, where somebody who uh, grows indoors at 30% humidity might want to have a plastic back moss pole, might want to have a thicker moss pole with more moss in it and so on. So, you know, same principle, we grow, we're building a vertical structure for our plant to grow up on but a slightly different adjustment based on your uh, existing conditions. 
All right, next one. My name is Kai Jung and I live in Brisbane, Australia. I follow and watch your YouTube videos when I lived in Sydney two years ago and now I moved to Brisbane and finally weather is good enough for me to have these tropical plants out on my courtyard all year round. I have my plants out on my courtyard all year round and I don't live in Brisbane. <laughs> I just Run, ran out of room. <laughs> I learned to make moss piles from your videos and my plants just took off and are thriving with very little effort. Brisbane semi-tropical weather does it all. My favorite is good old Pothos Marble Queen. So hardy and easy to look after and widely available and brackets cheap and the color is just to die for. I think in my opinion the color is even more beautiful than the exquisite Thai constellation and on a moss pole the size of the leaves are getting massive which is just magnificent. Keep doing what you're doing. I love your plants and Brett the cat. Happy planting. Brettles you get another mention. Why are you so shy and hiding? Ooh. Yeah, honestly, the, these are maybe nicer than like variegated monsteras. And you said Tycon as well. Easier to grow as well. So, I mean, I do love the fenestration of a variegated monstera. But yeah, honestly, these are great options for people that want to get into moss poles first. This is Porto's Marble Queen. And far behind. Blue. Beautiful. Yours kept quite a lot of um, blue despite maturing. Mine, I mean, you can compare to the juvenile ones down there, you can definitely see the difference, but it still looks nice blue silverish. Monstera Stendaliana. I don't think that will ever really size up in leaf size. Brazil. Nice. Really nice. Nice. Yes, yeah, see, this is Epipremnum panadum variegata, and see these like slightly deformed leaves over here that I'm talking about? Yeah, I've had that too. That's normal, it Variegated seems. Variegated Epipremnum pinnatum? Yes. It seems to be normal, but it will eventually grows out of it. There you go. You managed to grow your decursiva quite nice. Good on you. That looks awesome. Dragon tail. Yes, Oli. Hello. Oh my god. Hello, cutie pie. Oh, what a cutie. Hello. Philodendron octopus. Wow, yours is so thick. Mine is much skinnier. Very narrow. Looks really nice. What about the name? Violini? Violini? Splendid. Splendid. Pretty sure splendid. Yep. Nice. Might be a bit too hot for Vericosum outside in Brisbane. During summer at least. Beautiful, thank you for submitting. Looks really good. And you said that you keep them out all year around. On that topic, I wanna to show you something. I don't know how reliable this specific map is that I'm showing you over here, but I get so many comments when people are like, oh, I could never grow my plants as large as you do because I don't live in Australia. It's like Australia is a huge place. <laughs> It's, it's a whole continent, right? And we have desert, we have tropical, we have tempered, we have um, snowy mountains. There are ski, you can go skiing in Australia. I used to have a flatmate and she grew up in the snowy mountains and I grew up in Germany and I've never been skiing and she went skiing every single day almost, right? So she was like a skiing expert and I was like, I've never stood on one. No, just living in Australia does not automatically make your plants thrive. Of course, 
I'm quite lucky when it comes to humidity because I live close to the ocean. But again, that's not an Australia-wide phenomenon. Like Perth, for example, WA, very dry. Adelaide, very dry. Um, um, Brisbane, however, and that's why I'm talking about this, noise. So Brisbane would be, I think, somewhere here where the little plus symbol is right now. So you would be subtropical. The tropical climate really only starts at the top over there. So like Cairns would be somebody, somewhere here, I think, right? So there's only very little of Australia that actually has tropical climate. And that's not where the people live. All the people live on the coast over here. So Sydney is somewhere here, I think. So we are tempered climate. Melbourne is somewhere here, I think. It's hard to kind of pinpoint without the... Somewhere here would be Melbourne, right? Melbourne is also tempered further south, so even uh, cooler, right? So majority of people just live in Melbourne, Sydney or Brisbane. Uh, Perth is somewhere here as well. Uh, so I think between those four cities, that covers like 90% of us. We've had people from Canada, from Germany, submit plants over here that were even larger than the ones I grow, right? So you can be successful with this approach no matter where you live you might just need to put more effort into supplementing conditions than i might have to do but that's okay i supplement mainly light that's the only thing i supplement and in winter i supplement heat but um, i don't supplement humidity for example right but you might have a lot of light because you live in a beautiful apartment building with unobstructed windows but you might have to supplement uh, he, uh, heat and humidity instead or something like that right at the end of the day Every place is different um, and it doesn't so much depend on the country that you're in. I think it depends more on the actual house and your windows and your insulation and so on. Uh, your heating, um, that is, I think, more important uh, than whereabouts uh, in the world that apartment is. Sorry, I said rant over and then kept ranting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for submitting. I would love to one day uh, move a little bit further up north as well and appreciate the even better climate over there. But for now, I really can't complain about um, <clears throat> what I'm able to do in my garden over here in Sydney. Next one, um, Manuel from Bern in Switzerland. I saw your story on Instagram yesterday and hope I'm not too late. Absolutely not. Your videos are great and would love to see my plant on one of them. Alrighty, and you're on Instagram as well. Your name is fool underscore IA. Alrighty, you said you started your plant journey a year ago, so let's see. I've chosen three plants of my collection and I like to start with my Atapapuensi. See over here, this was the leaf I got her with. It was a top cutting and I put it first in water. So this one was the first leaf it grew and it already fell off. But here you see the second it was really small. And after that I put it on the moss pole and you see the leaves got bigger and bigger with each leaf. First and foremost, like, oh, yes, the leaves definitely got much bigger, but first and foremost, look at that change in internodal spacing where the plant started attaching to the pole. Like, that is how the plant wants to grow in nature. You can really see it grew really leggy internodal spacing. So this bit, right, really leggy stems, a leaf, leggy stem, and then once it started attaching to the pole, that signal light, that's true to nature. That's how they would grow in nature, right? Kind of attached to a tree. And that's then signalizing to the plant, let's go. So, nice. Also, you see the internodal space got really small. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, you mentioned it. I should watch the video first and then give my commentary. Over here, I have my Jose Buono. Similar over here, I got her with that leaf and it grew first some roots in water, then I put it on the moss pole. This one here was the first leaf in water, still really small due to no roots. And then this was the second leaf, I think. Then it got bit bigger and bigger with each leaf. Nice. Over here you see her newest leaf still unfurling and arming off with some beautiful variegation. My last plant I want to show you is my Florida Ghost. I got her as a training plant. I think she was already up here. I got her. That's also the reason why I put it on 
some plastic over the nodes with moss in it. And sometimes you see some roots grown in the plastic and the moss, but most of the roots now are in the moss and the new growth. You see, since she's attached to the moss pole, she grew beautiful and big. Yeah. And now I have the problem that she grows towards the light and like off the moss pole. So maybe you have a suggestion how I can manipulate her to still attach to the moss pole. Hi. Like that happens sometimes. Um, actually happened to my Florida beauty. So I don't know if it's something to do with maybe the Floridas in general that don't like that. What you can do is you can just use, well, what I do is I just use a piece of twine, I take it and I tie the plant to the moss pole and then once the roots have grown into the moss pole I can get rid of the piece of twine and then do it again and again and again. So I'm basically just helping the plant out finding its way into the pole but I don't permanently uh, use it to secure the plant, right? The idea is just that I do it uh, temporarily until the plant has grown roots. But it looks really good and really clearly shows how much nicer the plant has grown since it started attaching to the moss pole. Um, so, good on you. And you sent a little video of your whole collection as well. I would like to show you my office, aka plant room. You see over here a uh, big construction with a lot of poles on it. I have the whole construction on wheels so I can put it away and play some darts. Nice! I love that! Mm. crawling section with some beautiful alocasias and right here on the sideboard we have most of my beauties starting nice. with uh, Anzonia mint on the moss pole and a Cebu blue back there That's right here is a Igas Philodendron Mykens then a bit higher up here we have a Florida beauty a painted lady and back here is another Papuensi my other board. I have some other climbing philodendrons, but only a few of them on most poles. Uh, still really small banana chrysum and a Paroiso verde. Up here we have a lot of different anthuriums. And here you see my majestic. She has lose all her leaves down here due to thrips damage, but soon I can chop and extend her, so no problem. And that's another really amazing benefit of using moss poles, right? If something happens to the bottom part of the plant, you know, for thrips damage or whatever, it's okay. Chop and extend and nobody would ever know if something happened, so good on you. There anymore. Then let's go to the board over here. We have uh, Jose Buono oh, here, beautiful splendid, uh, Ansero Minima, right left to her, uh, Dubia, and another splendid, back here you see my Florida ghost, next to her, it's the really small Glorials. Over here I have an experiment with an uh, anterior lutery on a moss pole and a patriciae. Yes. I love the patriciae. Mm. Nice. Here a soderoi. I love your dragon scale alocasia. It looks so healthy. Good on you and you said you were in Switzerland. So <laughs> Switzerland is definitely not known for tropical climates. And you definitely understood your biggest shortcoming, light. And you have supplemented heaps with grow lights uh, everywhere. So, good on you. Okay, next one. My name is Martin and I have been following your videos since forever. I think you had just started to move into the massive apartment you had the first time you moved out on your own. You will have seen me commenting as Manabush. Anyway, your method of growing has literally got me hooked and I have had massive success with it despite being in the UK. I have had to adapt to non-Australian weather. There is no Australian weather. <laughs> uh, look, but fair enough. I always said as I was like, oh yeah, European weather. It's just like, yeah, Europe can be like beautiful summery Spain or it could be freezing cold Norway, right? <laughs> like Europe is also a big place. Um, in the US, they commonly use these zones. I don't, I don't really ever hear people refer to the zones unless uh, they're from the US. I don't know if this is something that people internationally do. Maybe this is something that we should all start doing. It makes more sense. I don't even know my own zone, to be honest. Um, but then I know, for example, even in Sydney in itself, we get forecasts for, for the city and we get 
a forecast for the city's west. Um, so for example, I think on the other day it said like, oh, 21 degrees in the city, 26 out west. Right? That's just within Sydney. We have a difference in temperatures, a difference in humidity, because the closer you live to the ocean, the cooler, but more humid, the more airflow you will have, the more likely you will have rain. Um, whereas if you live a little bit more continental, and I don't mean like 100 kilometers inwards, just like 10, 15, 20 kilometers further inwards, much hotter, less rain, less humidity, and so on. So there isn't even a Sydney climate uh, to start off with. Um, definitely not Australian weather. Sorry, I keep going on about this. This is really bothering me. <laughs> um, I would be interested, if my stuff is good enough for you and I can put a video together, I'd be proud to be on your channel. Let me know if my plants are of interest to you. A few weeks, a few quick snaps included so you can get an idea, including a leaf shot of a normal Siltipicana, which looks like it's starting to change after two years of just being a Siltipicana. I'm getting secondary fenestrations. I'm hoping I can get the leaves big because it's quite a dull plant otherwise. <laughs> we still can can't get the El Salvador here. Best wishes and thanks for your advice. All right, so it looks like you wanted me to email you back, but I kind of just copied everybody's email and downloaded without looking at it so I can react to it a little bit more, uh, or like, you know, organically and not just seen it all. I want this to be a nice surprise for me as well. So, sorry, I didn't come back to you, but I'll just use the photos that you already had attached anyway. Uh, it looks like this is an Atabapuensi. Look at it, beautiful. Very similar size to what mine grew over here until like half killed it. It's not dead, but it's not doing the best recently. But yeah, well done. And quite clearly, yep, you're supplementing with lights as well. And then you've got, I think, a big billy at the top over there. It looks awesome. Nice little corner, again, with some grow lights. Nice, uh, what's it called? Zebra blue in the back over there. Some nice crawlers. Oh, love that, uh, that Adansonia. Look at that Adansonia there. Decent size. And that's the Silta Bacana you're talking about. UPI. Beautiful. Mine just started getting similarish like that as well. I honestly don't know how large it can grow. I've had mine for four years and mine is a around about that size as well. So. Let us know, send me another email if you get it to grow really nice and large. I would love to see that. Dubias looking good. Honestly, when you said it's a dull looking plant, I really love that Silta Picana. I think with the fenestration, it gets really interesting. I agree without the fenestration, it's a little bit dull at times. Your Dubia in the back looks amazing as well. Is that a, is that a very coesome in the left? I don't know if it's a very coesome or a splendid. It looks too round to be a splendid. I can't believe you ask if your stuff is good enough to be included in this video. Are we looking at the same plants? They look amazing, like 10 out of 10. Honestly, I sometimes think people look at my plants and give my plants much more credit than they give their own. I think sometimes people look at my plants as well and they're like, oh, why are your plants so perfect? And I'm like, they're not perfect. I do have like yellow bits. I cut them off. I often just cut them off, right? So you don't see them. Or, you know, I mean, if I do full house plant tours, you get to see everything. But of course, I'm not gonna take my ugliest plant. I'm gonna shake it for you, uh, you know? So I think sometimes, I have tendencies to be the same. I think sometimes we are more critical with our own achievements, our own plants, our own hobbies, our own everything, right? Um, even just like our own bodies and everything than we are with others. I think sometimes we're so much more impressed by others or tolerating of others than we are with ourselves. So a little reality check for you over here. You're doing amazing, amazing. Don't downplay your achievements. Right? Be proud of what you've done because it looks fantastic. Thank you for submitting. And I'm so glad that I was able to uh, include you in this video. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, next one. I'm so excited for the opportunity to be featured on your YouTube channel. My name, my name is Alice and I'm from Cape Town, South Africa. I'm the owner of the Instagram 
planty underscore unicorn. I'm a huge fan of your channel and I've watched almost all your videos. I've attached my SPG inspired video through WeTransfer. Hopefully it is up to your standards. I've included two plants in my video, Philodendron Glorious and Philodendron Milano Chrysum. Up to my standards, you're all making me sound like I'm like this really snobby plant person. Come on, I have small plants too. I just have really good taste, you know? <laughs> um, so, let's have a look. Hi, Sydney plant guy. I'm Alice and I'm from Cape Town, South Africa. So, what did Sydney plant guy inspire me with? Well, definitely the Philodendron Glorious and the Philodendron Melanochrysum. This is the Philodendron Glorious. How could this plant possibly not be up to my standards? It's beautiful. of a Gloriosum and Melanochrysum. And I fell in love with how large these leaves have grown. I've also started making my own moss balls thanks to watching some videos from Sydney Plant Guy. So I make my own moss balls with some mesh fencing that you can get at a local hardware store and with just a casual plastic from a juice bottle. So this is just an empty juice bottle that we have left. And I got inspired by Sydney Plant Guy to make my own moss balls, especially with the plastic backing, um, just to kind of keep more moisture in the moss pole. And hence, I have now grown this Philodendron Glorious, um, which it did have a little bit of a hiccup, um, and I got him in the beginning of 2023, in January 2023. And um, ever since uh, the hiccup was that it got re um, root rot, and ever since then, has managed to fully recover, and this is its latest leaf. Hiccups are perfectly normal. I've had plenty of hiccups in my plant journey. That's the whole journey, right? It doesn't need to be linear. It would be so boring. Um, it's ups and downs, which makes the ups even more rewarding. Um, now, in relation to root rot, that is a non-concern going forward. Once the plant has grown up the moss pile and every node has rooted into the moss pile, that's it. You have like let's say you have five nodes on there plus obviously the root ball at the bottom you actually have six root systems now you would need to have root rot in all six root systems for this plant to fully be cactus right so growing up a moss pole and establishing that vertical extension of the root system isn't just space saving true to nature enables them to grow nice and large enables them to grow a larger root system is also like an insurance policy so good on you. It looked really, really nice. And also, I love that you're making your own moss piles just from recycled juice bottles. It's perfectly fine. Again, just comes to show that the principle just needs to be the same, like a vertical structure that holds a growing medium. How you go about it, there's so many options. There isn't just one right way. I personally just use way too many moss piles to make them all myself and um, make them out of juice bottles. I don't drink that much juice. Um, so for me, I just go with the um, with Grow Vertical and their recycled plastic backing option. This is my Philodendron Milano Chrysum. Um, it's looking slightly rough, but it has grown quite big leaves over here. I don't take that advice from Sydney Plant Guy to kind of chop him. So these are two plants essentially. This is the initial top half of it, and this is the top of the bottom one. So as you can see, this is quite lush over here, but not so lush up top. But yeah, hopefully it gets to grow much bigger leaves. Um, and I'm looking forward to hopefully getting it as big as Sydney Plant Guy's. And that's a wrap with what Sydney Plant Guy has inspired me with my plant collection. Bye! Aw, oh, you're so sweet. Thank you so much for submitting, Alice. Actually, Bruce one pointed I said earlier, Milanos are so much harder to size up than the hybrids. So uh, you obviously managed to grow that glorious quite nice and large already, whereas the Milano isn't increasing a in leaf size as much. And that was exactly my experience as well. So don't think it has anything to do with us. I think it has everything to do with the plants themselves. But I love that to compensate for the leaf size, you just created a lusher pole, right? Mine definitely took three to four years to really give me like nice leaves that I'm really excited and happy with. So stay patient and eventually it will, we'll get there. Again, it's all about the journey. Okay, 
Next one. Hello Jan, I have attached a video of what I at first thought was an enjoy but maybe a glacier or pearls in jade pothos. Jesus, how many names of, for pothos are there these days? <laughs> um, I can never tell the difference between those. You know what? Probably, they're probably all the same. I think enjoy and jade is the same. No, I think jade is green. Anyway, we'll have a look in a sec. Um, I can never tell the difference between those. My Instagram is novel plant notes. I haven't posted in a while, but I'm hoping to get back on there and connect with the plant community more this year. Thanks for all the inspiration and guidance. It has really helped me dive into and enjoy this hobby. From California in the US. So let's have a look. Nice. In Australia, we refer to this as Pothos Enjoy. But I think sometimes different countries have different names for the same plant as well. So I don't know. Uh, what this one is referred to in other countries, but I know that they are known for being really hard to size up. So you're getting a decent increase in leaf size over here already. So that tells me that you know what you're doing. Good on you and thank you for submitting. Hello Jan, hope you're doing well. Congrats on the move. Thank you. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> I am Victoria from Lithuania. I live in the Netherlands. I work as a graphic designer and plants are my biggest hobby now. Very much inspired by you. I hope you enjoy my video. I'm sorry if it's too long, but it's my first time doing this. Hopefully I'm not being boring. Um, feel free to crop the video or edit it in the way that suits your video format. If you need more details, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. Alrighty, let's have a look. Oh, it is 17 minutes long. That is slightly long. I'll watch all of it, but I'll probably not be able to include all of it in this video. We're already, uh, we're already a lot of, long time in. <laughs> I'm not even halfway through the submissions for this video. But let's just have a look at it. Also, by the way, sometimes I speed up the videos and I watch it in double speed and so on. Uh, that's not because I'm bored or because you guys are boring. It's just because I've got about three hours of filming to get through and um, yeah, I can only do so much filming before my head hurts. So I'm trying to look at all of them <laughs> before I'm just over it. Hi, oh my God, you cracked me up. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Aka Jan and all the fellow plant lovers, plant watchers, plant parents. Today we're going to be talking about my plants and the tips that Sydney Plant Guy gave me and all of us uh, to grow plants on moss balls. Is this Monstera Dinsomii that I have? Um, I know this is not a lot of progress for a year, but I'm still very proud of this. It looks good. Look, if the empty bottom part maybe bothers you, that's your opportunity to do a chop and extend, right? Um, but it looks really good and that's exactly how I started off with as well. Adansonii, Deliciosa, Silta Picana, they were like my first couple of plants that I got. So, that's it. I don't want to talk about all the plants in a little bit more detail. Um, as you can see, these are not the standard moss balls that um, Jan has been talking about. Um, this is a little bit different. I need these all by myself too. These moss balls are made from lining material. So this is like plastic used for putting in your kitchen cupboard so things don't slip. And I do... Let's go back to that one because of what, what are you using? Hang on. Balls are made from lining material. So this is like plastic used for putting in your kitchen cupboard so things don't slip. Overlap them when I attach them with zip ties. Yeah, I know I, I could have gotten a grow tropicals and all that, but to be frank, with the amount of plants I'm planning to grow, it's just not affordable. <laughs> 100% look I grow vertical is an Australian company Tim is my friend as well so to me it's a no-brainer but you live in Lithuania you don't need to buy plastic and get it shipped across half of the world uh, to create a moss pole if you don't want to find an alternative and you're happy to pay for the international shipping and so on then it's totally an option but if I were living in Lithuania, I would also not use Grow Vertical. Sorry, Tim, but come on, that's just realistic. We're just talking about a piece of plastic in the back. 
you can definitely find alternatives. This plant started off with like four leaves and uh, I first put it on moss wool that was made of wired mesh, but it wasn't coated. And the plant doesn't grow, it wasn't attaching to the moss wool, I think it didn't have enough light and I couldn't keep the moss wool moist enough, so it just didn't grow at all for me when it. Then I moved to the back home where I'm from. And after that I moved to the Netherlands where currently I'm growing this plant. And here I came up with the idea, I got inspired by... Um, Sorry, you're in the Netherlands, not in Lithuania, my bad. And I used uh, coated mesh here and I think it works a lot better for me. Sorry, I just watched this in double speed, but basically to recap, uh, Victoria was saying that she had the open moss poles first and that didn't really work for her and then with the plastic backing she has much more success, which is probably because it retains moisture better. You need to put less effort into watering um, and the plant appreciates uh, having a consistently moist moss pole. So good on you. It's really just about, you know, trial and error. You saw a problem, you thought about it and you fixed it. That's it, Ram. Wow. Large um, in leaf size, and I can already get bigger leaves up top. So the top two nodes that I've grown have have attached. The plan is to just continue growing it up. It's also on the moss pole that I make myself. And um, yeah, so far so good. I can see the roots on the back. I don't know if I can show you this. There they are. These are the roots here. And the plant seems happy. I'm this is my philodendron splendid. I also nice. got this as a cutting and rooted. So I cut it in water first, I propagated it and then... I love that you went through the effort of actually like editing this video for me. I love this. Thank you. You know what? You should just take that video and upload it to YouTube. People would love to see the full thing. Tong. And I wanted to put it on the moss pole, but I was in between moving countries, so it just got overgrown and it was a bit weird and wonky. So I chopped it in half, I kept it in water for a bit longer, and that's why I have, I don't know if you can see this, two vines. Um, yes, love that, love that, because if you already know that your plant is too long and leggy, it's growing off the moss pole and whatever, and then you put it on the moss pole in hindsight, it had already reached the top of the moss pole without actually have taken advantage of the moss pole, that's just a bit of a waste of moss pole and time in my uh, experience. Plus now, you're already starting off with two plants, twice the impact. And the moss poles work, like the plant is attaching itself it's not tied with anything. I have this little thingy here that um, I sometimes just guide plants um, into the center of the moss pole before they attach, before the node attaches, so it's not on the edge. That's exactly what I do as well. I just use a piece of wire. Actually, the wire mesh that I use for my moss poles comes with a piece of wire that's kind of wrapped around it, so I just use that one because I already have it, but your clip is much better. This one doesn't grow in highlight conditions. It's actually pretty dark where this one lives, but it doesn't seem like it minds it. Yes, it has long petioles and but the leaves like. In general, rule of thumb, if a plant grows more on the forest floor, it would also get exposed to less light in nature. Um, whereas a climber that grows up the tree, as it grows up the tree, it obviously gets access to more light because it leaves that like, you know, all the plants at the bottom behind that would shade the forest floor. So not surprised that your gloriosum isn't requiring all too much light to grow. I have nothing against getting bigger plants and then doing whatever you want to them, as long as it makes you happy. And I think that's pretty much it. I think that's a great note to end on, as long as it makes you happy. It's your hobby. You end up spending a lot of time with these plants and uh, caring for them, looking at them and so on. So do what makes you happy and you seem really happy about your plants. So thank you so much for sharing your collection and I'm really grateful that uh, I was able to inspire you with some of these techniques and that you're having so much fun using them. Next one we got, my name is Ida, Ida, and I live in Sweden, then it would be Ida, I think. Um, your method for growing on moss poles works great here with the addition of many grow lights and a daily spraying of water in the winter when humidity can get under 20%. Under 20%? 
Is that not bad for your skin as well? When I think of Swedish people, I always think of like perfect skin. How do you have perfect skin with 20% humidity? In the video, you can uh, mention my Instagram where the video is uploaded to. Here is the link. P.S. I know that the Mame is a crawler. It's an experiment and that the vanilla is not an aeroid. Vanilla? But your method seems so far to work great on them. Oh, I'm intrigued. Let's have a look. All right. Okay. Love. So I love that you put a little piece of plastic on the inside of your moss pile. I've actually done that recently as well for some of my plants outside. Looks good. Oh, and I love that you've got little labels. Nice. Okay, vanilla plantifolia is a species of vanilla orchid native to Mexico. Interesting. I mean, the mame, it looks like it's taking to the moss pole. I tried with my... I think with my plumaniae I tried. And Elichi grew sideways on the pole, so... Didn't work for me trying to get a climber, trying to get a crawler to climb up a moss pole. Didn't work for me, but proof is in the pudding. Can always give it a shot. So just judging by the size of your plants, to me it looks like you recently got into the hobby and you just started a whole bunch of plants on these moss poles. So good on you. Now I'm assuming you put these plants on the floor there in a lineup for the sake of the video because I'd hate for them to not be closer to the window. But I think you said you supplement with grow lights, right? With the addition of many grow lights. So maybe you've got grow lights there instead. I mean, at least this way they're facing you, right? Um, but yeah, I suppose light would be a huge challenge for you in Sweden, but I love that that's not stopping you from giving it a shot anyway. Would love to see a little update in a year or so to see how they're doing. Next, hey Jan and Brad. I saw your post on YouTube and immediately decided to write this email. My name is Madelon, I'm 23 years old and I live in a semi bungalow in NL. What's NL? I don't know what NL is. With my two cats, Moby and Nico. My plant obsession started in November 22 and the collection has been growing ever since. I was a complete newbie, but I already hit the local news a couple of months later in March 23 after someone found out about my last resort plant shelter. Eventually getting into the whole plant community scene led me to your content. You really convinced me to start using grow poles on some of my aeroids. Therefore, I'd love to share some photos and videos and also express my, my gratitude towards you. Look at you, you're a bit of a local uh, celebrity. I've got over 120 plants with 11 of them attached to transparent moss poles. And now there's Netherlands. That took me so long. I kind of immediately assumed it's a state in the US. Unfortunately, our Dutch climate is absolutely shit compared to Australia. This midwin it's midwinter here, so most of my plants are in their dormant phase. Do you have any special care tips for this? All right, and then you gave me your recipe, and you said there's videos attached, and your Instagram name. I put everything on screen, so let's have a look. Noise. Vercoisum and a little splendid. A mojito. Alright. I can only judge by this one photo here, of course, and obviously, you know, light changes, but just based on this photo that I'm looking at, it looks like you get much more light a little bit further down on that wall. Uh, and that is 
usually the case, right? Like depending on how big your window is and where your window is, right under the window, obviously, like imagine my hand is the window, right under the window, obviously you don't see it, right? And then a plant kind of like this far away from the window because the sun comes from above would kind of be perfectly positioned in this nice little bright indirect light spot. But as soon as you travel higher than the actual window is, the light doesn't shine from below up, the light shines from up down, right? So it looks like if these shelves would just be a little lower, your plants might be getting much more light. Yes, it might be the middle of winter where you are, but you're probably heating the inside of your apartment anyway. So I believe the dormancy or the lack of growth that you might see in your plants is most likely a result of too little light, not necessarily temperature induced dormancy also get some grow lights to supplement that so that would be my tip uh, dealing with um, dormancy during winter light nice scrumiferum yes nice roots decent beautiful maybe just a consideration in the long run for now your plants are still smallish so this is perfectly fine but these moss poles are quite small so Maybe think about how you can size up these moss poles in the long run as your plants uh, progress and get larger. So that's the little recovery, that recovery story where your, um, where your cat kicked over the other plant. Honestly, sometimes this, it takes so, so long to recover a plant from uh, like near death. Once the plant is established and has a healthy root system and has more leaves that can contribute to photosynthesis, then the plant really starts growing a bit faster. So it's usually like the first year is really painful and then the second year is much faster and much more rewarding. But honestly, there's nothing more rewarding than bringing back a plant from the brink of death. I have one that has like four leaves by now and it's been with me for four years, so. <laughs> Everybody has their blood. Thank you, Madelon, for sharing. And let's move on to the next one. Really excited to share my moss pulse with you and your community. My name is Paolo. I live in an apartment in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And my plantagram is provol1.plantas. I put it up on screen. I just like to thank you for being such an inspiration to me and so many of us. I had never been much interested in plants, but your passion, dedication and beautiful plants really sparked something in me. All my plants are less than a year and a half old and the result I got from following your advice are amazing. Hope, hope 2024 brings a lot of success for you and keep up the amazing work. Paolo. My housemate is from Rio as well. I've heard a lot of stories. Uh, I'm intrigued and wish one day I can go. It's very far from here. Very expensive to get there from Australia. So let's have a look. I mean, I know that Rio is very, very hot. I think you get, you regularly get over 40 degrees, but it will also be very humid. So, so very this tropical. This is my current moss pole corner. I've got a Raphidophora tetrasperma, two Anonsoniae, which have already been chopped and extended. I have uh, some Monstera species, uh, Philodendron verrucosum. I'm surprised the verrucosum is so happy given how hot it would be, but maybe you air conditioning. But maybe you also use air conditioning, I don't know. Monstera deliciosa. A Philodendron Maximum and Philodendron Gloriosum are the highlights here. Really proud of this very cozy leaf. Very pretty. I also have very here pretty, a yeah. Philodendron Squamiferum mm -hmm. with really mm -hmm. light, nice uh, fuzzy petioles. This plant matures really fast, looks really nice. And finally, my biggest pride, my Philodendron Melanocrysum. It was about this big when I got it, and now it's already on an almost two meter pole with really, really large leaves in a little over a year, a year and three or four months, I think. And well, aren't you making me look like an idiot? Well, <laughs> I was just talking, the whole video I'm talking about how hard it is to size up a Milano Chrysum. Well, don't worry, we found the answer. We just need to do exactly what Paolo is doing. Going to give me this uh, big caterpillar. Really excited to see this one. Well done. Love that. Looks amazing. I can't believe you've only been doing this for a year and a half. That's crazy because your plants already look amazing. So thank you so much for sharing. And I'll let you know if I ever come to Rio. You can show me all the nice plant shops. Hey Jan, I'm sending you a video I made about being inspired by your tip. 
tips. There I told about what I had a problem with at the beginning and added a question and I have for you. I started playing with Moss Pulse after seeing your profile and since then you are the only person I watch on YouTube regarding plants. Oh thank you but don't just watch me. There's so many different ways of growing plants. I'm just showing one option right. There's other options that you can consider and so on as well but obviously I appreciate anybody who watches my videos. It's by far the best way for you guys to support me. Thank you. Forgive my English, it's the first time I've ever used that language in a video, so it can be hard to listen to. Don't worry, I was so nervous about speaking English on camera uh, myself when I first started. Um, and I've lived here for 11 years, so what's my excuse? Um, you're Polish, but you live in Spain, and your social media is Ani underscore Galaska. And you added bloopers. Okay, I'm so excited. Okay, let's have a look at this. Oh, lengthy video as well. You guys put so much effort into these videos. I feel bad if I can't include all of it, but uh, let's have a look. <laughs> oh my God, is that the bloopers one? <laughs> Hi, my name's Anna. I'm from Poland, but I live in Spain. And all of my plants live also in Spain. Well, I'm glad that <laughs> I'm glad I live with you. Not uh, you don't have a, a long distance relationship with them. I don't know what it is about you, but I'm already cracking up. <laughs> I'm new in this hobby because I started six months ago, and my most posts have only three months. So I don't really have a huge leaves and all of these things, but I can show you my collection and also I can tell you what shoes I had because I had a few shoes when I created my first most balls. So first of all my collection I don't really remember all of the names so I'm just doing it in a post-production. So yeah this is my philodendron it's a Birkin I guess something like this but it grows so slow so I Yes, it is a philodendron birkin. I don't think it will take full advantage of the moss pole. It grows more in a cluster. I've actually never seen anybody grow it on a moss pole, which doesn't mean that it can't be done. So let us know. Please share updates um, on that, you know, if it works. I don't really feel like... And also, did you just say you, you only started your moss poles three months ago? Come on, look at this behind you. You already have a full wall of moss pulse in three months. Good on you. It could never be at the top of the moss pole. I have my monster Adansoni. Actually, that's my last one because I had millibugs and it was a disaster. I can show you and it killed a half of my leaves, so it was terrible. Here I have my Epipremnum, which grows obviously wonderful. Here I have my little Monstera, Deliciosa, of course. The biggest leaves I have is on this Monstera Adansoni, but like I was telling you before, I had a millibox and it was hard a little bit and I don't have a half of his leaves so it doesn't look the best the leaves are definitely the largest I had but I feel like she's going to die anyway so I'm sad because of it but I don't really feel like I can do anything about it and here also I have my epigrams and here I have my syngonium and I really hate syngoniums I, I just for me it's a nightmare <laughs> it was sick for a long time. Now it looks pretty good. Look at these leaves. So amazing. But I don't really feel like it needs to be on the moss pole because I don't think that any of the roots are inside. With syngoniums, I've noticed as well that when they're juvenile and when you don't give them moss, moss pole, they're happy to grow as a bit of, in a bit of a cluster, but they can also send out like a runner to climb up that moss pole. So I think it will happen. I think also not all syngoniums are the same. Some work, some don't. I mean, I think in the back over here, you've got this syngonium there as well. Not sure where it's coming from, if it's coming from above or if it's coming from below, but 
I do share your sentiment on syngoniums, they're not my favorites. So, it just look good. I hope that it feels better with it. So yeah, I also have on the Mosbo my philodendron. It is actually a little bit larger than when I first saw it, when I bought it. So it seems to be very happy on the Mosbo. I also have, this is my philodendron Twin Wings. I attached it here. Never heard of Twin Wings. Today, so it's a fresh one, it's in your the class, so please be nice to him. Okay, this is my philodendron Florida Beauty, green, obviously. And I also attached it yesterday and I created smaller muscle. I don't really know why because I think that that one will grow pretty fast, but I'm not sure. Run Glorioso, I guess, something like this. I'm not really sure if this is a climber, but I just want to have it on a muscle because I think that this is gorgeous. Maybe in the uh, it's not a it's not a climber actually it's a crawler um, there's a hybrid philodendron glorious I don't know who named them but they sound too similar but philodendron glorious is a hybrid of gloriosum in Milano chrysum and Milano chrysum parentage gives it the the climbing genes right? so glorious is a climber gloriosum is a crawler but try your luck proof is in the pudding uh, I mean you're not the first person to put a crawler on a Moss pole, and I've seen people have success, right? In the last video, somebody had a Dean on a Moss pole, and it worked perfectly fine. So, but I love your reasoning because I like it. <laughs> um. That leaf because it damaged in a delivery. So, yeah, that's how it looks like. I also have this little baby. So, I have a big expectation about this one and okay so maybe i will do the question at the end of the video because i have a question about this little guy at the beginning i had many problems when i started to create most balls because the first of my problems was to how to attach the plant on it because i always broke a few leaves so it was hard for me I'm not really sure why, because it's, you know, you know the feeling when someone doing something but he actually knows what he's doing and everything looks so easy, so easy, but when you want to do it, you figure it out that, oh, okay, it's not that easy and it was in my experience. <laughs> Welcome to the internet! Um, <laughs> yes, for sure. Look, having done it many, many times over many, many years helps. Editing definitely also helps. Cut out the bits that are kind of boring to watch, which in general just make the video seem faster and more effortless, right? If it comes across like it's really easy for me, then I take that as a compliment to my editing skills because I made it seem kind of seamless, I suppose. But of course, practice makes mastery, I think that's the saying, right? Like, it, all, everything is always so easy in theory until you actually do it, it gets a bit harder. Now, I think your problem gets worse the larger the plant is that you're trying to attach to a moss pole. If you're trying to attach a tiny plant that hasn't even really started growing up, you're just potting it up like you pot up any other plant and then you just chuck a moss pole in the pot with it and then it will find its own way. But what I usually do is I clip the plant to the moss pole, just using a piece of twine or using a piece of wire. And once the plant has been clipped to the moss pole, then I pot up the combination of it, right? I don't put in um, the, the, I don't put in the plant first and the moss pole and so on. And I, I kind of just try and do it at, in one go, if that makes sense. When I saw Jan, everything look, oh my God, it's so easy. I can do it too. But it wasn't that easy. <laughs> Okay, I said easy like 10 times, <laughs> never mind. But I... You're funny, I love this. Are you the... Hang on. Are you the one who said your English isn't that good? You're the one who said, sorry for my English, it's the first time you're using this language in a video. I can watch you in double speed and understand every word, honestly. You're very funny in your delivery, I love it. Like, honestly, very good. Don't doubt yourself. Everybody, so far, almost everybody in this video has doubted himself. Yeah, that was my first problem. Okay, my second problem was how to make moss pole stable. 
Yes, I wanted to address this with you anyway, so glad you're asking. Let's, let's listen. Because without the garden sticks, I, I can't really imagine it. I can't really even imagine how can I add another moss pole up. Like, you know, the I, I can't even imagine it. It's going to fall, I'm 100% sure. Maybe with a few garden sticks. I don't know, for now, I'm just don't seeing this because it's totally not stable. Okay, so the issue here is when you wiggle on your pole, the pole wiggles within the pot. If I wiggle on my pole, the pole and the pot wiggle, right? Still have chances of the whole thing falling, but I just pop it in a heavy decorative planter. But I think with you, the issue is that your pole would fall out of its pot. Even with a garden stick. I don't know. I, I don't really... I'm, I'm just worried, you know, I'm just worried that when I add another most pole, it's everything is going to fall. So this is my uh, security. So yeah, so my only three problems was stabilization, attached plant on the most pole, and oh sorry, I remember at the beginning I had a lot of mold on my mm. most pole. Maybe because my heating was turned off. I don't know, but after I turned on my heating, everything just disappeared. And my question, when should I put this plant on the moss pole? Because I'm not sure how big she needs to be when I will attach it in the moss pole. And I hope that we can talk about it. <laughs> because it's pretty hard for me to understand it and also I'm wondering when I can attach this one. This is my main question and I had also a second one but I forgot. <laughs> okay, your delivery, I don't know. I really like your sense of humor and um, in general, I always really appreciate the dry sense of humor um, Eastern Europeans have. Um, I think that's, um, I suppose I'm European myself, so maybe that's where this comes from. All right, let's address all of it. So from the stabilization part, I, I'm pretty certain that you might not pot your moss pole to the very bottom of your pot, right? When I pot up the moss pole, I pot it all the way to the bottom and then I top it up with airroid mix. My airroid mix is very chunky. So there's large bits that hold the moss pole in place and don't make it wobble around. If you have a very fine mix and you move your moss pole, the fine mix just kind of gives way, I suppose. So maybe your mix isn't chunky enough, but most likely you didn't put your moss po pole all the way into the bottom. Now it also looks like you're using a plastic mesh. The plastic mesh in itself doesn't have that much structural integrity like the, the wire mesh would have. So maybe that contributes as well. And I'm giving the opposite tip of <laughs> that I gave to everybody else so far is I think your moss pods are quite thick actually. Obviously the thicker the moss pole, the more moss it holds, the heavier it gets. But at the same time, a thicker moss pole also has a thicker base to stand on. So I think it's mainly the material. I think the last one isn't the biggest issue. I think it's just contributing because of the other two things that are wrong as well. So maybe that's gonna help it. Um, my 90 centimeter moss poles stand up perfectly fine without a garden stake. I only start adding the garden stake when I extend them to 180 centimeters. I already forgot what you asked. Oh, and then you ask when you should start your plants on a moss pole. I actually have a dedicated video on that as well, which is in my moss pole playlist. So have a look at that if you want more information, but rule of thumb is pot it up like you would pot up any other plant. That tiny little plant that you've got there, when would you repot it into a larger pot? Moss pole aside or not, you would repot it when it has outgrown its current pot. So you would usually repot based on root system, not based on leaf size, right? So once the plant has outgrown that little pot, with the next repot, give it a larger pot and just you happen to add a moss pole into the same pot that you potted it up into. 
with the Veracoisum, similar, uh, similar principle, but with that one you can also consider, given that it's already got a bit of a um, internodal spacing till the next node, you can also look for when that node is growing its first little root because that first little root you would love to grow into the moss pole rather than just growing into the air. In your air with heating on it's probably just gonna dry out and be useless so you want that node to be up against a moss pole by the time it's ready to grow its next mm, root. That's the word, <laughs> sorry. Um, but yeah, rule of thumb, you repot based on the root system, not based on the size of the plant. You could have a massive plant that you just chopped off that has no roots. Not good for repotting just yet. You could have a tiny plant with a huge root system because you just cut the top off. Perfectly fine to be potted up on a moss pot straight away. Judge it based on the roots, not the leaves. I think that this is it. This is... No, this is not it. I need to see the bloopers. <laughs> this is my main question. And I had also a second one. But I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. It was super a lot. I feel like, you know, it's... Ooh. You know, like... Probably I am... First problem, moss. Mold, do over water. <laughs> it was a mess. Yeah, it was a mess. Okay, you're officially like my favorite person. <laughs> um, I forgot to address your mold issue. So mold issue, I think could be a couple of reasons. First of all, there could be mold spores in the moss that you bought. That's it, right? Um, very little you can do to control this, but if you get the option to choose between different moss, I would always go for the most premium option. But just because it's premium, or premium, just because the packaging says premium, doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't have mold spores in it, right? It really depends as well on how they store and package it, right? Same issue that comes with pre-bought uh, potting mix that you buy in the store, right? It's not necessarily the potting mix in itself that's the issue, but it gets wet and then they're stored somewhere and that just encourages mold to form. Secondly, lack of airflow encourages mold and obviously high humidity, specifically high humidity in combination with a lack of airflow. So that's why I reckon your mold issues disappeared with the introduction of heating because it dries out your air. But I don't use heating a uh, majority of the year, like I heat for maybe one or two year, uh, months of the year, um, but I don't really have mold issues and I think it is due to um, airflow consistent airflow, always having my windows open, having a fan on and so on. Um, another thing you could consider when you make the moss pole, afterwards put the moss in, uh, the, put a moss pole in the sun. Uh, the UV of the sun should kill existing mold spores. Anna, thank you so much. You officially made my day with your video. Um, that was fun. Uh, next one, I follow you on YouTube and Instagram and wanted to get involved in your Moss Pop project. Please find video attached. Ignore if the quality is insufficient. It was fun making anyway. Best wishes from England. Jutta. Use very German name. Jutta? Jutta? JK Sprouts on Instagram. Let's have a look. Hi Jan and greetings from the south of England. As you can probably tell from my accent, I am originally from Germany. I knew it! Not by your accent, by your name. By your accent too. But I've lived in England 30 years now. I've got quite a few decades of experience in plant cares, but I only started with philodendrons and particularly putting them on moss poles this last year and I've taken a lot of your guidance a lot of your tutorials and I wanted to tell you what I've achieved so far um, so I'm very lucky in that I can get the moss directly out of the garden so I'm not sure if this is sphagnum moss but the plants seem to like it and I'm jealous how big is your garden you can probably tell especially from the astatum, that where they managed to latch on to it, they're doing really well. I mean, these were all baby plants a year ago. 
Very As nice. As you can see from the various water reservoirs, I haven't quite cracked the ideal way to water them yet. And by the way, they don't normally stand here. They've got better locations. This is just for the video. Uh, what I've also tried to do is co-plant to make them look a bit fuller while they're still developing yeah. and save myself some space. And in some cases it works really well, like with the uh, epipremnum and the mycomes. The uh, pink princess is not enjoying it so much, so <laughs> she'll get her own pot as soon as we completed our house move. Honestly, pink princesses, I was never a fan. Each to their own bar. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say thanks very much. And there's a little Amid room. Thanks very much for, for all your help and advice. And I will continue following you and hopefully learn even more. Quick swing to the plants that I've decided don't need more spores, at least not yet. And Bye. Thank you, Jutta. It must be interesting for you guys listening to like Germans with a British accent versus Germans with an Australian accent. Um, so probably Germans with an uh, American accent as well. But the German always comes through. Damn it! It looks really nice and I can't believe you actually managed to get your own moss from your garden. I'm very jealous. Thank you so much for sharing. Next, hi, my, hey Jan and Brad, my name is Celine, I'm from the Netherlands and I currently have seven moss pole all inspired by your tutorials. It's been a little over a year since I really got into plants and found your channel. A few days ago I saw your message on YouTube and immediately got excited to participate. Uh, it would be really fun to be part of your video after many many hours and late nights of not being able to stop watching your fun, interesting and informative plant content. Thank you so much. Actually, I never think about, like I obviously know that there's people watching, but yeah, fair enough. I know those nights where you just binge somebody's full channel. It's crazy to think that people do that with me. I mentioned everything important in the video, but wanted to clarify one thing a little more. I say the growth is slow, but besides that, there's another problem. After battling thrips and seemingly having gotten rid of them, the leaf, grow the leaf growth hasn't been increasing, but decreasing. I wonder what your thoughts are on that. Maybe still related to thrips or the bad weather conditions in the Netherlands or something entirely else. Celine, aka the green nurse on the gram. All right, Celine, let's have a look at you. Hi, Jan. My name is Celine. I'm from the Netherlands, and my collection currently has seven moss poles, all made with your tutorials. All of them are philodendrons. And here's Quick question. I've seen these little figurines on the internet. What's, what's their goal? Can somebody please explain? There goes them with two separate splendid plants. I struggled with thrips for about half a year, which definitely has affected my plants and their growth. But I'm hoping they are completely gone now. I use this bulb and bottles to water them. Though nice. I gotta say, the bottle makes a huge mess every time. But maybe that's because I let them dry out a little bit too much. At first I didn't think of putting a queen anthurium on a moss pole but your videos gave me the idea to eventually do it too. Here's the Glorious, doing pretty well compared to the other ones. I've had most of them for about a year, but I am honestly confused why the growth is so slow on my other plants. I have recently taken an air-layered propagation from this Melanocrysum, And here it is now. My last two poles are the Mikans and the Sodiroi. Mikans are doing pretty well, and these were all my first tries on moss poles, so <laughs> they're not perfect as you can see. I ran out of moss with this one. I'd say my biggest struggles have been the thrips, 
the slow growth and some moss has started molding. I think I unfortunately bought moss from the wrong store, but I'm trying to treat it with the homemade spray and to have more airflow in my room. I think the slow growth may be the bad weather conditions in the Netherlands, but if you have any other thoughts, I'd love to hear it. Thank you for watching. Alrighty, let's unpack it. Let's talk about the watering first. If the bottle upside down technique makes a huge mess, it's definitely that your moss is too dry to absorb water. Dry moss gets hydrophobic, uh, which means the water just kind of pearls off, aka makes a mess. Two things you can do about it, either water more frequently, not more, just more frequently. You could use the same amount of water just across three waterings a week instead of two waterings, for example, right? So you water before the moss part fully dries out, that way the moss can absorb the water nice and neatly um, instead of it just purling off. Or you reduce the speed in which the water is released by the bottle so that it really slowly releases the water, giving the moss more time to absorb the water and stop being hydrophobic. Or you quickly go around and spray your moss pile, like mist it a little bit, just so it can absorb a little bit of water. And once it is no longer dry, then you can uh, do the bottle. Uh, technique. Um, by the way, to, to make the release of the water slower, just decrease the size of the hull or um, have the hull kind of partially blocked by a little bit of moss or something like that. Just wiggle it around at the top until you're happy with the flow of water. So that's the first thing. Then secondly, why the growth is so slow. Now, usually light sets the growth potential. Right? So my initial thought is that if your plant isn't growing, it is probably because it's not getting enough light. Or if it's really growing really slowly or if it's growing with really long internodal spacing, leaf, uh, leaf size decreasing, it's usually indicator of insufficient light. Now insufficient light usually comes with the colder season uh, because you also, it's also the darker season. Right? Um, but you are supplementing with grow lights. I feel like these grow lights are maybe just a little high up in that cabinet for those leaves that are at the very bottom of the moss pile. But I think you're mainly using it for your queen up there. So I think light might be the first thing I would consider. Now, of course, even if you give your plant amazing light, the plant might actually focus on re-establishing a healthy root system again after it's gone through quite a lot of stress from uh, what you've been telling me. So maybe the plant is growing, but it's growing roots rather than growing leaves at this stage. Definitely having had thrips doesn't help. The plant needs to recover a little bit and as part of that usually pushes out smaller leaves rather than larger leaves. Even just something simple like a repot can set the plant back a little bit. Um, yeah, or even just changing its position around and so on. Plants don't like stress and when they're exposed to stress they usually show that. Um, um, so it's hard to say exactly but most likely it's a combination of things but I think light is probably the first one I would tackle if I were you. Next up, we've got Matthew from Melbourne. The silver sword and Syngonia mojito photos, correct us if they're wrong with them. Uh, the silver sword and Syngonia mojito photos, correct us if we are wrong. We're both taken one year ago exactly on the day, on the 9th and 10th of January 2023, and the updated photos also only yesterday, 9th of January 2024. Alrighty, Matthew, let's have a look. Alright, so you, that's your silver sword last year and your mojito last year. And we've got your bat flower. That's pretty. It's really cool. And then this is your syngonium now. Nice. Definitely sized up decently. Discoria discolor. Mmm. That is such a rewarding grower. You're gonna love this one. And your silver sword. Definitely, look at that. You can see a huge increase in leaf size from when it was first put on the moss pole to, whoop, to where it is now. Well done. And 
looks like you like giraffes they're my favorite animal obviously after Bradley you're my favorite animal you're not an animal my baby you are your family yeah I love giraffes thank you for sharing next one I know absolutely nothing apart from your name which is frog so let's have a look at it Hang on, hang on, hang on. There's a few things to come back to. Look at this. First of all, you look quite young. I love when young people get into this hobby so early already. Your moss pole looks great and it looks like you've got them all hanging in like a greenhouse structure. Love that. Because what hangs can't fall, well it can still fall, but I can't tip over. That is huge. That has got to be the biggest mayo I've ever seen. Beautiful. I like this one. I do love heart shaped. That is huge. Bloody hell. Oh, nice. I actually just saw a Patusa for sale. For only 14 bucks. I was very close to buying it, but then I figured. I have so many plants that look pretty much like that. But yours looks really good. Should have bought it. Damn it. Already paid for the shipping. Nice. 10 out of 10. Thank you so much for sharing. All right. Next one from MP Pat. Again, I only know you from the name that came through when you emailed me. Um, so let's have a look. Looks good. I don't know if you position these plants here just for the sake of the video, but you know, even just having a plant, look at this plant over here, the light that this plant would get versus the pink one over here. Sorry, this bloody, the pink one over there would get so much better light, even though they're right next to each other, right? Just because, well, the moss pole of the um, Pink Princess is shading the plant in the back, right? So maybe you just put them here for the sake of the video, but if I were you, I would put them up there on the table. <laughs> More light, the better, if you want to get nice large growth. Love that tie. That has beautiful variegation, really nice. Um, looks great, looks awesome. Maybe a consideration if possible see if you can find a um, mesh that is not made from plastic I don't know how strong your plastic is it could be a really strong plastic but think about if this plastic would hold up if you extend your poles and you end up having two meter tall poles and so on um, or think yeah but apart from that it looks amazing well done thanks for sharing all right, next up we've got Grace. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity to potentially get featured in your channel. I have gone over the moss pole theme. I hope you forgive me for doing so. My name is Grace and I live in Cairns, far north Queensland. I've always been a planty person, but I lived in a remote Aboriginal community in Cape York for quite a long time, which made my planty collection difficult. So I've finally made a decision to move back home to Cairns in late 2022 and in, in, and in October of 23, I've put my small greenhouse together. I look at my plants every day with awe for the joy and sense of serenity they bring me. My YouTube channel is Grace with Nature and let's have a look wow a lot of succulents sorry i don't know if i downloaded this video in like a really bad version or really bad um quality or if that's because of the way that you send it to me but it's a bit blurry but we'll see we'll we'll make it work okay first of all this is cans look at the back like cans is proper tropical right <laughs> i'm jealous 
raining heavily. <laughs> And I know you struggle, you get a greenhouse and you're like, oh my god, so much space. And then you put your plants in like, damn it, I have already outgrown my greenhouse on day one. <laughs> Never really seen, I think this is a white princess, right? Never really seen white princesses on moss poles much. Um, I've never really seen one really size up either. And if you can't get them to size up uh, in far north Queensland, I have very low hopes for me. Not that I have that plant anyway, but. I love how you have some branches up there that you then use to hook plants into. It creates a really nice jungly vibe. That's actually such a bloody good idea. I've got to do this too. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the inspiration. Thank you. Thanks for submitting that. That gave me some really good ideas for my own greenhouse. So I'm glad we are able to exchange some ideas. Alrighty, uh, greetings from Istanbul. Yay, I don't think we've had turkey yet. So, it's nice. Uh, the other day somebody commented and I think they were watching from Barbados. If that's you, hello. I thought it was so cool. I was like, wow. I think I'm reaching all corners of the world. That is crazy. Anyway, we finally have a sunny morning here. So I captured a video for my SPG inspired moss poles. You have been such an inspiration to me. You helped and encouraged me to grow my collection and showed me how to keep my plants happy. I'm using your chunky soil recipe and moss poles are made upon your directions. Here is my Philodendron Glorious, Sodoroi, Adansonii and on SPG inspired moss poles. I have Small plant hobby Instagram, it would make my day if you include that instead of my name. And your Instagram is house underscore of underscore Yezil. And I'll pop that on screen for everybody as well. So this is the solo roy when you first attach them. And this is your glorious when you first attached it. Nice, okay. Looks like you're putting some cling wrap around the moss pole just to keep it moist for longer. Just be really careful with potential uh, mold, right? And that's definitely encouraging mold due to lack of airflow. But let's have a look at your video. Hello, Jan. This is House of Yeshil all the way from Istanbul. And these are my moss poles done in Sydney plant guy style. As you can see, I have followed your recipe. Mm. And these are quite thriving. This is my glorious. Looks awesome. Look at that increase in leaf size. Back in September with like these two leaves and there was another leaf and it's gone now. But look at it now. Look at the size of it. This is my Soderoi. Again, it was maybe year high. Um, it came in a very moist soil when I got it, so I reported it and put it on a moss pole the day it arrived here and... Uh, Is that variegated? At the size of it now. And... I don't know if it's this bit makes me think that there's some random variegation in here. I'm sure people in the comments will say it's fungal issues. I feel like every time somebody shows a variegated plants, like 50% of people say, oh my God, it's so pretty. And 50% of people say it's diseased. <laughs> um. There's another leaf coming. And this is my Abyssonii. It had some spider mite, so had some damage, but it's it good. doing really nicely. So I 
and you have like a drip irrigation system going from one moss pole to the other. Smart. Up. And again, um, I grew this from a cutting uh, last year and this has been on it for less than six months, I think, and it has climbed all the way up. Um, I water my moss poles on automatic watering and yeah. These are my three Sydney plant guy uh, inspired moss balls. Thanks for sharing. I do love this one sort of leaf here. It does look like it has some variegation in it. And I love that you used the automation. I personally don't think it's, it doesn't suit my aesthetic, but this is definitely the most automated you can get when it comes to watering moss balls. So good on you. Thank you for sharing. The camera running out of battery for the second time while filming is kind of telling me that I'm probably too slow at this. I hope the pace is okay for everybody. I suppose it's a lengthy video yet again, but I know you guys really like my lengthy videos, so hopefully this is not pushing it. Right, next one, we've got Monko, and I know you from Instagram. I love your plants. I'm excited. All right, the things I learned from you and practice is thickness of the pole, the way of watering, check the pulse through the crunchy sound test, watering using the bottles uh, upside down, weak fertilizer every time I water, don't give water to the pot unless you just repot it, the ways of chopping extending and the importance of grow lights and airflow. Wow, thank you so much. It's like a little achievements list I should put on my CV. I love that, thank you. The things that I cannot do the same way with how you do, but I adapt in my way due to availabilities locally is that I don't find similar plastic coated wire grids locally. I use plastic mesh, fair enough. For more stability, I use much thicker garden stakes than yours. If you don't live in Australia and you don't have access to the exact same things that I use, you might just slowly have to, uh, slightly have to um, adjust my approach, uh, but that's perfectly fine. It's not about copying exactly what I do. I really just hope that it might give you inspiration and that you get the principles um, and then you can apply them to yourself. Um, I don't find heavy decorative pots that are like locally. I use terracotta pots for weight. My Instagram account is monko underscore the underscore plant. Um, thanks for the interesting content. I enjoy so much. I've actually incorporated some of her videos in one of my videos before because she has this amazing setup where all of her poles are on like a little cart that she can just wheel around when it comes to watering. So let's have a look at what uh, Monko has submitted. Beautiful. Yes, okay, I can see you use a plastic mesh, you use a thicker garden stake, yep. Is this sound? No. Um, amazing, looks really good. And you use the bottles at the top. Wow, look at that. <laughs> oh, that looks so good. Nice, El Salvador. Yeah, look, Epipremnums um, do that as well, like Monsteras. They actually grow roots into the moss pole throughout the whole stem, not just on the node. So they really, really, really love moss poles. I don't know if you're talking to me and I cut the sound out again. I don't know. Um, but I think your email explained everything. Love the pothos. You've got great natural lighting coming in here as well. Yeah, see these, uh, maybe we get a better view later, but see these little carts with wheels on them down on the bottom right, they're all on them. And then that cart has like a little, whoop. You see that the cart has like a little support beam at the back and that's what you, I suppose, hook your plants into, I think.
looks so beautiful. I hope you don't mind me also including the video that I referenced where you push that cart around. I think that was so genius. It wouldn't work with me because to get into the garden is like a little step. So, um, but I love that idea. It's genius. And I love your Instagram and I love your general aesthetic. I think that is just, sorry, I'm just stalking you right now again. Um, I think you just have such a nice aesthetic. Your, po your posts are great as well. It's just very pleasing, very eye-pleasing. Love that everything is white and black and then the colors of the plants really pop. The greens, beautiful. This is the sort of things that get me really excited. Thank you so much for submitting. I was really hoping you would, so thank you. All right. Hi Jan, thanks for providing an opportunity for your followers to showcase their success. We really enjoy your content and thanks for all the good tips you share. Here's my video. We are from Edmonton, Alberta, which is Canada, right? Supposedly the coldest place on earth yesterday. Damn. Even though we keep our precious plants indoors, but the winter here can still be unforgiving to some plant parents. So I use my socials to share how I do my best to help my plants thrive in the great, in the great white north. My socials are green leaf white snow on YouTube and green leaf underscore white snow on Instagram. I'll pop it up on screen as well. Thank you and have a great day. I don't think I actually know your name, but we'll just go with green leaf white snow so green leaf white snow hi everyone welcome to my channel i am cherry a subtropicalist transplanted to the great white north aka canada so in the city that i live in right now edmonton alberta we currently have an extreme cold alert what does that mean if you can see through the window behind me it's actually entirely white outside it's been snowing for a few days is there a color cage out there? Oh, the poor... No, I think the snow outside is probably about this high. Um, and when it comes to the temperature, mm, I think on average these few days, we have like about minus 35 to minus 40. And is that Fahrenheit or Celsius? Actually, it doesn't matter. It should just not have a minus in front of it. And from what I heard this morning when I woke up, with the extreme cold alert and the wind chill, I think it dipped down to approximately minus 50. I haven't gone outside yet, so I don't know how cold it is. I am indoor, enjoying the warm weather, not warm weather, <laughs> warmer temperature with my plants in my cozy pajama. How do I grow plants, tropical plants, in a climate like this? Obviously, I have a lot of um, grow lights, humidifier, and the temperature is also cent centrally controlled. So the plants is not going to suffer in this type of extreme cold winter. And just proving a point, like your plants are the same size as the plants from the person previously who lived in far north Queensland, a super tropical environment. Just that she had to do nothing for it. She just chucked them out on the veranda and mother nature takes care of everything. And you need to put a lot of effort into supplementing your conditions through humidifiers, heating and grow lights, right? But that doesn't mean that it's impossible for you. It just makes it, it just means that it's harder for you, but good on you. And because it's harder for you, even more appreciated that you actually share all of your tips and tricks on YouTube. You deserve way more subscribers than you have. So if you are struggling with similar issues, you're growing in a cool climate and you want some top tips, make sure to give her a little subscribe and or follow depending on the social media you like to use. Um, but also at the same time, there are several different measures that I put in to make sure they grow healthy. And one of them is um, obviously moss poles. I put a lot of my climbing plants on moss poles and it all thanks to Sydney Plant Guy. Yeah, that's me! <laughs> because of him, I am kind of running out of space for my plants on the pole. So gonna... More than happy to be blamed for that one. Them are growing larger and larger and we do see a lot of success in the technique so today i'll just use this opportunity to kind of show some of the plants that i have um that are doing well on moss pole i think a part of it is because the moss pole um each node we do have roots into the moss pole already so it's really taking the benefit of 
um, you know, this extended pod, as Sydney Penga always says, uh, to get more nutrient and more water into the system. And now, if you look at the leaf size, this is the oldest leaf at the bottom, right? And then on the top, on the top, on the top, this one. You can see the size up. Aside from that, just look at how beautiful. How it's the middle of winter. It's minus 50 something degrees where you are and your plants are thriving. Honestly, good on you. You're definitely putting all the effort and work in to make this uh, work for you and it really shows. So good on you. You also in the video, it's, it's 15 minutes long, so we can't watch all of it, but in the video you also proceed to explaining where you get your things from and so on. So if you're in Canada, definitely make sure to hit her up and uh, have a look at the video to find out where she sources all of her materials. And you even gave a bit of a comparison between different poles that you have tried out. Um, so good on you. Thank you for sharing. Aloha from Hawaii. I am so grateful for your channel and most poor content, especially all the grief you get from abusing your plants. <laughs> all that trashing seems to be paying off, however. I think you're referring to people freaking out when I shake my plants online and like people compare to like shaken baby syndrome and so on, honestly. Like plants in nature get bashed around by the wind and when I shake it on Instagram, it's like people are about to call like child protective services on me, seriously. In all seriousness, you're an amazing character in the plant hobby and I am grateful to send you a video of my Moss Pole inspiration. A YouTube link can be found at the bottom of the email. Thank you. I've been in the planting community for 20 plus years, but your Moss Poles have been revolutionary. Luca of the Rocky Fern uh, from Hawaii. Thank you. Let's have a look. Now, my Moss Poles are not, rev they're not my Moss Poles. Um, people have been growing on moss poles for many many decades and so on i suppose i'm just really vocal on social media about them so i don't want to take credit for moss poles at large but i think in an attempt to be not so self-conscious about myself like everybody else has been in this video today i do think i can give myself a bit of credit for really making the approach popular and sharing the ins and outs about it and sharing so much more about it than just saying put put it on a moss pole explaining why and how and just showing you the pudding right cooking the pudding and showing you the pudding so thank you appreciate the credit but i cannot be credited for moss pole as the revolutionary um invention or something like that right like this is, has been a, a well-known growing technique for a long time but i suppose on social media i've probably been the most vocal about it over the last few years now you submitted a 30 minute video so i will just click into some random time of your video and that's what we're going to watch you guys like about it and what you don't like about it if that's the case but let's start with i have a bunch of uh well let's do the main guy here i think we'll your moss pole is definitely thick enough, so you're not going to have any issues with it being too skinny and eventually the plant outgrowing the moss pole. Make sure to smack your plant. It's sorry. <laughs> and then tell me what you guys think of... What is that substrate? It looks like rice husk or something like that. I don't think anybody in Australia uses this, or I've never really seen it being sold. But it's always interesting to see where different people from different parts of the world use different things, but we all end up having good results. I have a bunch of... Uh, well, let's do the main guy here. I think we'll have this guy kind of climbing up the Ooh, main part I like of the plant this. here, and let me get his roots deep down in there. Ah, and they're so pretty when they start to uh, when they start to shingle. I think they're just so freaking cool. Okay, and then I'll put one more up top here. That's exactly and what this I do. New growth point actually is where it's going to put most of its energy. So I'm going to anchor down that too. Yes. Wanna you want to get that onto the pole to get those roots. And pull it down one crack. It actually has two new growth points right where I'm pinning it down right here. So you guys can see that there's one here and then this guy here is going to be this new leaf. And then it should start to shingle up. Okay. Nice, okay, so you're gonna multi-plant this. I do love shingles on the moss pole. My recommendation would be make the front of it a flat side, like a D-shaped moss pole, 
because then the shingling plant shingles nice and like evenly, right? Whereas if you have it on the round moss pole, it's still gonna shingle, but it's gonna kind of curve around the moss pole. In my opinion, doesn't make as nice of a display as when the front is flat. That would be the only thing I would probably do differently, but apart from that, whatever you're doing looks amazing. You obviously have a lot of knowledge around this topic already and you have your YouTube channel as well. So if you are in the US and you want to learn from somebody local about their approach to moss poles and the materials that they use, please check them out. Next one. Hi Jan, since watching your great videos, we went away on holidays a couple of weeks ago. Everyone running around packing. Guess what I was doing? Arranging plants with the right lighting and watering. <laughs> Cheers, Chris from Bris Vegas. Alrighty. So let's have a look at you. Yeah, honestly, going on holidays is like going away, even if it's just going away for a day or two. Like I just run around and check on everybody before I go. <laughs> Uh, look at you wow okay see when people are like oh wooding moss poles is so much work you just pop the bottles on there and you do nothing it does it all by itself obviously you need to fill the bottles and so on but still looks good nice looks like you might be using bro verticals hang on this looks so familiar did you see no, I think there was somebody else from um, Brisbane that had the same shelving maybe. Awesome, good on you, looks amazing. Would love to see how all of this looks in about a year's time because I reckon they're just about to explode. Thanks for sharing, Chris, and thanks for prioritizing your plants. <laughs> all right, next one. Hey, Jan, my name is Sydney. All right, that's actually, so many people think my name is actually Sydney, but no, it's just where I live. My name is Sydney Kegler, and I'm a plant lover from the US. It would be weird if my name is Sydney and I live in Sydney, right? But if your name is Sydney and you don't live in Sydney, then I think it's such a beautiful name. I have followed you from the very beginning of my plant journey and have learned so much from you. I am a graduate student earning my doctorate of medicine and plants keep me sane. Nice. I live in Nebraska, which is smack in the middle of the country. The only state that is landlocked by at least three states every direction. Damn. The weather here is dry to humid and hot, hot, hot in summer and several cold and dry and, and severely cold and dry in winter. My Instagram and YouTube are both Sid the Plant Doc. My video is posted on YouTube. It is a tour of all of my moss poles. I currently have 10. My Instagram also has a shorter reel of some of the poles. I am particular proud of. I'm gonna go to your Instagram. I'm gonna include the short form video because I've been sitting here for too long already. Sorry. All right, let's have a look. Oh, Moss poles, yes. Nice, Brandy. That, look at you, nice one. All right, let's have a look at that again. That went too quickly. Yes, I wanna grow, yes. Yes, I want moss pole. Nice, nice, nice. Really like that, I think it's in the Skelodo, maybe it's not in Sonia, just a really large one, probably in the Skelodo. Looks really good, and I can see you've got some grow lights in the back, so yeah, of course, I suppose you would face all the challenges in the world, right? Like in summer, you've, <laughs> But you would face challenges of your plant overheating in winter. It's too cold for them. It's too, <laughs> you know, you would have to, you would have to deal with all the conditions in the world and supplement accordingly. So your growing experience would probably look very different in summer than it does in winter and so on. Based on your plants, I can tell that you've understood the principle and you're applying it and you're acing it. So thank you so much for sharing. Next one. Hi, my name is Juniper. I'm from the US and I have a YouTube channel called Juniper Gross Stuff. Next one. I have a short video disclaimer. I have never shot one before. If you can't use it, that is okay. Many thanks for continuing your ex excellent advice on your excellent channel. Martin. Thank you, Martin. Let's have a look at your video. Hi, Jan. My name is Martin and hi, Brad. Um, Bradley! 
Hang on. Hang on, I'm so confused. Didn't I see these videos already before? I've been watching your channel for somewhere over two years now, uh, and it's given me an immense amount of pleasure. And Hang on, I'm generally so confused. Didn't I react to this already? Did I maybe save the photos wrong? Well, you, to you said your name was Mandy, so this is you. Um, at some point I'll tell you the story of how I came to be doing it at all. But anyway, um, I live in a very small house in the UK with very little natural light. So I have to rely on grow lights and uh, cramped spaces, as you can probably see. Um, I'm moving over to this green corner. These are the sort of the, uh, the moss poles that I learned all my techniques from watching you, to be honest. I also have some of the grow vertical style moss bottles I live in the UK, so I don't fancy importing them at the minute, uh, which I like, but I think for big moss bottles, round ones are definitely the way to go. They're far more stable. I've had quite a few fallovers with, uh, with the uh, grow vertical style. So we've got I haven't actually experienced that. This silty bacana is a bottom cut of um, a larger plant, which I'll show you later. I'm probably going to get rid of it, to be honest. I could use the moss bottles for something more exciting. I somehow agree. I mean, I still have mine on a moss pole and it's just been on there and look, it's one of the ones that I put in the garden. It's not worth my real estate indoors for sure. Um, and I'm a bit bored of it. It was the first one I got by Cebu Blue, which is now starting to fenestrate and reach the top of its first pole. Um, over here we've got a Crammed right in the corner, you probably can't see it very well there, is my um, Laniata, my Adam's. Looks awesome. The Ivar Laniata, it did have much bigger leaves than that. Since it's chop and extend, I've planted two poles together to make it thicker on the pole. They've gone a bit smaller, but I'm sure as the summer kicks in, they'll get all lovely and large again. And it's, it's a combination of the chop and extend, it being repotted, it being winter and so on. But it looks still fantastic, it looks amazing to find somewhere else to put it because there is not enough room. In the background here, you can see my, you probably can't see it very well, you can see my massive um, Melanocrysum. This leaf here is very big, really quite big. Um, Huge! It's the top cut um, from one that had reached the top of its pole, or more up, in actual fact it had reached one and a half of its poles because the petiole stick up so far, the top was scraping the ceiling so I had to cut it. It's got a new leaf coming through there, um, which is still expanding out. Hopefully it'll be as large as the last one, although it is winter over here, so it may not be. My uh, Vitari Folium, which is a new edition. I've only just started with Amphuriums, and I'm, I'm, I'm struck. Things like Vitari Folium and the Queen I'm doing fine with. Weirdly, I'm not doing very well with a Forgetii and a Crystalline, which I'll show you. I'm doing terribly with Clarinervium, which everybody says is the easiest one to grow. So don't worry, some plants are just not meant to be for us. Okay, so I'm so confused because this is a video that corresponds to some photos that I already reacted to, but I associated the photos with somebody different. So something in my whole numbering, so you're all just numbers for me now. Like I kind of downloaded them with numbers so I can I didn't have to look at them already, you know what I mean? I wanted to download them all because also the links expire and so on. So I must have gone wrong somewhere. Mm. <laughs> I'm not good at this, am I? Okay, very close. So you'll get there, it's only halfway up its first. Well, no, it's just reaching the top of what I think is a 160 centimeter grow vertical style pole, which is exceptionally unstable. <laughs> It looks really good though, it looks really good. So you're, it's a, again a quite lengthy video, so I won't be able to include all of it in here. I've got my Billetine, which is an absolute insane mess. Um, but Billetines are, aren't they? You know what I mean? They're sort of they are. Long petioles, and it's relying on natural light as well, which isn't helping. I've got another Yopi eye here. Also, Look at all of the roots. I think these are all roots that came at the top of the moss pole. Yeah, billies are absolute mess, but they're really nice, um, so it's worth it. So thanks for sharing, looks really good. Definitely you know exactly what you're doing and you have found a way to supplement all of your conditions with grow lights. So thank you for sharing. Now I need to investigate 
who I associated your photos with then. Hang on. No, Martin. I didn't mess up. You did. You submitted twice. <laughs> okay. So, Martin is the same Martin that we already looked at earlier. I'm glad you're the problem, not me. <laughs> nah, just kidding. I'm just, I'm actually genuinely worried that something goes wrong with my organization and I can attribute all of the plants that I react to to the wrong person or something like that. That would be very unfortunate. So I think I'm not the problem. All right, two more to go. Next one is from Barrett Logan and he's 12 years old. So let's have a look at that. 12, damn. Alrighty. Hi, Jan. My name is Barrett Logan and I am 12 years old and I'm going to be showing you all my plants. I have a Dean McDowell right here, Thai constellation. Huge Thai, good on you. This other monster right here. Mm -hmm. And Alocasia Frydeck. I could not get this plant to work for me indoors. It only started growing once I put it outside in the garden, in the ground. So good on you for, for making this work. I, I was not able to. It's pushing out a new leaf. Happy days. Happy days. And a silver sword philodendron and fuzzy petiole. And I made this staghorn fern centerpiece thing with like an orchid and a um, staghorn fern, yeah. Look at you! And I have a vanilla art, variegated vanilla orchid, and I got a tiny, tiny glorious. And this other orchid right here, forgot the name. And yeah, if you have any tips and tricks that you'd like to share with me, thing, I would really appreciate it. Honestly, there isn't really a tip I can give you because what you're doing already looks amazing. The proof is in the pudding and your plants are growing and the, you know, the, the leaves are showing that you are doing the right thing. So good on you. I think my recommendation would be to just stick with it. You're only 12 and you're already so far advanced in this hobby. Imagine what you can achieve. Imagine what you can learn in the next uh, decades, right? Like you have so much life ahead of you i really hope that plants stay a big part of your life uh, forever because it's a really nice way to continuously connect to nature because sometimes when we get older we get so busy and in our head and you know everything is like go 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 we for kind of forget the joy of life and plants really helped me um, rediscover that so i hope you don't lose it so you don't have to rediscover it um, but thank you so much for sharing and i'm thoroughly impressed uh, by your collection Alrighty, and then we have the last one i was totally inspired by watching your channel when i first discovered which i first discovered one year ago december 22 i used to have a passion for aeroids in the past but then kind of put them aside and i focused on developing a lot large orchid collection. Then I discovered your channel in December 22 and you've inspired me to get back into aeroids. I realized that I had never been able to achieve the unbelievable leaf size that you have and so I decided to take on the challenge. So they are a little more than one year old now. Gardeners always say plants sleep, creep and then leap. I've never heard of that but I'm not a gardener so but I love that. That makes so much sense um, in years one to three. Mine slept the first year, but now they're picking up. So don't worry, next year is when they're gonna explode. And I've uh, even done some chop and extending on my philodendrons, watching your tutorials for guidance. Watching your videos, I learned uh, about other aeroids I wanted to try and ordered them online and mounted them too. At first, I made my moss pots just like you do from scratch, but even in the greenhouse, I was having trouble keeping them keeping the moss moist. So I've developed my style and switched to plastic back poles with a mixture of sphagnum moss and tree fern fiber substrate. And they've picked up growth this winter. Nice. I've Now I've got about 30 moss poles. My husband says it looks like there's an urban city of towering moss pole buildings in my greenhouse <laughs> that you'll see in the photos. I also tracked down GT Followed Focus in the USA on Amazon. Thank 
next to you and I'm loving it. In fact, I'm now using the GT Orchid Bloom Fertilizer 2 on my collection of 280 plus orchids with incredible results. Best blooms I've ever had. Awesome. Yes, GT actually has a full range of products for everything, for natives, for flowers, for vegetables, for chilies, for for everything, I just use foliage focus because I want to focus on foliage, but that's awesome to know. I never tried anything else from the focus range, but um, really appreciate your endorsement. Um, I've even got so bold as to try an experiment in attaching philodendron plumonii and gloriosum to poles to see if a crawler could climb to save space. And yes, they do, although slowly, and they do look good on poles too. I tried with my plumonii, it wasn't the best, but Proof is in the pudding. Bradley is pretty cute too. And I love to see your friends and especially the wonderful Sydney gardens you visit. Thank you, you're at the top of my YouTube watching list. It's Mary from Blacksburg, Virginia, USA. PlantLady73 on Instagram. Nice, I love that you put little air plants on the top of each of your moss poles to, you know, why not fill that space, awesome. Yes, very nice. Ooh, I love this one. Is that Anthurium vicii? Maybe, I think so. Oh, I love the banana. Nice. Very nice. And I love this greenhouse structure that you've got there with like the, uh, something about curved windows that, mm, I love it. Oh, there's only those two. I would love to have seen a little bit more of the actual greenhouse structure. That looks really, really nice. But what you put in the greenhouse also looks really nice. Thank you so much for sharing and for your really nice uh, words. Thank you for um, watching my channel. That was three and a half hours. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. But it didn't feel like three and a half hours because time flies when you're having fun. And I thoroughly enjoyed all of this. I really loved seeing plant collections from all over the world, troubleshooting, helping you a little bit, getting your questions uh, and getting some inspiration myself. So thank you so much for sharing. We're certainly going to do this more often. So keep an eye on the community tab. But it's way overdue to wrap it up. Thank you so much. Like, subscribe, leave a nice comment. And I'll see you next time. You filmed for three and a half hours and all you did was sleep. And now you're waking up, huh? Now that we're done, what is this behavior? <laughs>